Okay, all praises to Yahoo Elohim. It's your boy Paco, a.k.a. Perez, out from the Rumble Room. Tonight we have a, uh engaging discussion ahead. Uh, um, a recent, recently resurfaced uh, controversy. Um, <clears throat> as many of you may know, uh, there's been an ongoing conversation between Christians and Hebrew Israelites. Um, one of the claims uh, that we'll discuss tonight, the, main, the principal claim that we'll discuss tonight is the, not a claim, but really the notion of um, ethnocentrism versus spirituality. So many Christians believe that because Hebrews um, lay claim to their heritage, uh, that that this eclipse eclipses the importance of the salvific work of who they call Jesus Christ, who we refer to as Yahusha Hamashiach, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Um, but many in the Israelite community say that um, it's not so. And to sort of explore this notion of why Christians um, make such a claim or would make such a charge or would think such a thing, uh, we'll be discussing this issue uh, with my guest, Matt Sali. Matt Sali, Matt So So Real, Matt So Real Sali, that's S So Real. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. Um, go check it out to see what he's about after the dialogue, if you're not familiar with who he is. Uh, but just to give a quick background, Matt Sully um, was part of a group called the Shield Squad, headed by Vocab Malone, um, that included the likes of Mike Faithful God Pereira, uh, Laron G. Con Campbell, Marshall Cherry Love Forbes. And they, uh, the group was a response to the, to the surge of, of, of Hebrew Israelites, of black people who we, who we call, who America refers to, has referred to as Negroes or African Americans. These individuals are coming forward and laying claim to Israelite heritage. Um, <clears throat> and as stated before, in the process of that, Christians have, Christians have argued that there is a um, is a maximization of ethnocentrism and a minimiz and and by default by 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 laying claim by laying emphasis on making emphasis of the Israelite heritage, there is a minimization or even an eclipsing of the salvific work of Jesus Christ, who Israelites refer to as Yehoshua Hamashiach, Yehoshua Hamashiach. Okay, um, Matt, uh, welcome. Hey, peace, peace. What's going on, everybody? Uh, so real here. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, yeah, I just wanted to just say that um, I'm glad to definitely um, be a part of the conversation. And I think this is a good warm up to the um, conversation that's going to happen this Thursday at 8 p.m. on Debate Talk for You with uh, Sal Showtime. Basically, I was asked to be a part of a panel called The Rise of the Moderate Hebrews. And um, it's going to be me, I believe it's G-Man, and there are a few other individuals I invited, um, such as, uh, I believe, Ashton Johnson or Alton Johnson, and also Cherry Love. And I'm going to see if there's other people that's going to be on the panel as well. And what we're going to do, we're just simply going to go ahead and kind of voice some of the issues that, um, you know, we as Christians have when it comes to the moderate Hebrews basically stepping to the word of God and, you know, the way that they practice and the things that they believe. There seem to be, obviously, you know, some some real issues as to how they, you know, explain, express, and, and um, you know, pretty much kind of talk about the faith. So other than that, that's all I really wanted to say. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, I hope tonight, Sock, that people are edified. You know, and let's just let's just keep it real with the topic: ethnocentrism versus spirituality. Um, yeah, I just hope that you know people are edified, and that we as men we could just both hear each other out and, and just both honestly interact with each other and and really be honest. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, def definitely uh, keeping it real is what we do in the Rumble Room, um, and I absolutely. Uh, second your motion to uh, have a respectful amicable dialogue um, to restate as I stated in um, previous episodes prior to this I'm part of a 
uh, initiative to foster uh, amicable and respectful dialogue between Christians and Hebrew Israelites. If you are a Christian and there is a topic you'd like to discuss, please do not hesitate to contact me. If you're on Facebook, um, just hit my profile and click message. If you if you are hit, listening from YouTube, um, my address is the Biblical Rumble Room. Okay, that is the Biblical Rumble Room at Gmail dot com. Um, if you are not part of the Rumble Room, I'd like to take this opportunity to extend an invitation. Uh, there's lots of great theological dialogue. Um, it is challenging. Um, if you don't know much about the Bible, just by even spectating and going down the common board, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to figure out things you agree with, things you disagree with, and you'll be able to talk about those things. And the wonderful thing about the Rumble Room is we don't kick you out for believing differently. We And we don't kick, so Hebrew Israelites aren't kicked out for believing differently. Christians aren't kicked out for believing differently, whether you're Catholic, whether you're Protestant. If you make a good point, if you make great arguments, we don't kick you out, okay? Unlike many other uh, Christian uh, administered uh, biblical discussion rooms. So join the Rumble Room. There's freedom of expression, freedom of difference of opinion. It's challenging. It's fun. It's fun. It's, it's really, we're always laughing on a daily basis. Uh, we're also coming upon a year uh, of the Rumble Room uh, being up. So join us. Uh, you're going to learn a lot. Um, <clears throat> if you are not subscribed to the Rumble Room, I'd, I'd like to uh, extend this invitation to subscribe to the Rumble Room channel on, on YouTube. Uh, that way you can get all the updates, hit the likes, click the bells, and you'll you'll get it all from us. You won't miss a thing. All right. Um, <clears throat> so to initiate, before we go into our main um, uh, discussion, man, I just want every, all of the listeners, if they haven't met you before, you know, and, and believe me, guys, it, Matt, so, so real Sully, you, you, chances are you, if you haven't heard of him, you've heard his voice. Um, if you haven't heard his nickname, most likely you've seen his name. If you're part of biblical discussion groups on Facebook, the guy is active. Uh, he's always um, conversing and dialoguing with Hebrews, and they're always never short of entertaining. Um, I always learn a lot. Um, me, my, myself and Matt, has we've had various discussions um, spanning uh, the year um, prior. And um, he's uh, challenged me, and I've learned a lot because of the because of the, the ways he's challenged me. So I'm always welcome. I always um, welcome Matt on the channel um, when there's great things to talk about. Um, now, Matt. So if for those who are just meeting you for the first time, um, if you can sort of give us a background, like maybe if I could just ask a few questions so people can really understand, like what what background you're coming from. So if you can, if you can speak on like the uh, denomination, um, uh, maybe are, so would you consider yourself Protestant or, or what, what denomination of Christianity do you, do you uh, subscribe to? Sure. I can get a, a short background on myself. Um, sure. Basically, you know, to this day, I still just call myself a Christian, just like most other Christians still call themselves Christian. But I think that the more that you talk to them, you'll begin to see what type of Christian that they are. You know, and that's just kind of natural. It's no different than the Jews back in the day. You know what I mean? They all considered themselves Jews, but based on their circles that they hung out in or, you know, the people that you've seen with them around or at least the clothes that they wear, you could tell whether they're a regular Jew or whether they're a Pharisee because of the way they dress and how they do their thing. Or you could tell sometimes they're a Sadducee because they hang around Rome a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, other than that, my background as a Christian, um, I definitely know that uh, during the time of high school, I really started to um, try to go ahead and embrace my faith a lot more. Uh, as I got into college, you know, I did run into a lot of things from uh, the New Age community, the conscious community back in 2004 and 2005, and that kind of got me digging into my word a lot more. 
it was in the year 2007 that I actually ran into individuals like Keith Truth and Chris White and those kind of individuals that pretty much showed, you know, this thing called apologetics before I even knew what it really was. I just saw them kind of basically refuting a lot of these things that really just stripped people away from their faith, which was the zeitgeist movement in 2007. Um, that, that was kind of earth shattering. But um, after that, um, I started to notice that there was a context of the Bible. There was a context of history and there's a lot of things that are being left out. And that was my little journey into learning how to study like the word. From there, I started getting into like, you know, commentaries and other things and, and my world began to grow from there. Years later, back in, I mean, down, I, I would say like maybe in 2010, 2009, I ran into a group basically called the Black Hebrew Israelites. A long story short, um, of course, there are other chapters with my run into uh, with reform theology and, you know, things like that, how I kind of ran in uh, some newer parts of my family. Um, all of those elements pretty much kind of led me to the, you know, type of Christian I am today, which is I lean strongly toward Eastern Orthodoxy. Um, okay. and that's a whole story in itself back in 2013. Which is, which is pretty unique because um, a, as part of the S.H.I.E.L.D. squad, most of those guys are, are, are Protestant evangelicals. So you hold a very unique niche within the group. Is that correct? Exactly. You know, you could pretty much say that I'm uh, pre-denominational, I guess, <laughs> you know, if you want to <laughs> yeah. put it that way. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just a, it's a whole different kind of, um, it's a whole different kind of way of looking at the word. Um, just looking at the world in general. So there have been people that have been greatly influenced um, that, I, that, you know, have been a great influence on in my life. For example, Michael Heiser, John Walton, Derek Gilbert, um, you know, and a host of all, you know, a bunch of other individuals. Um, and these are, these are Protestant uh, writers and, uh, and authors, right? Yeah. But even then okay. they wouldn't even really consider themselves technically Protestant because you know, those yeah, guys, modern, like a modern day evangelical. I would, you know. Once again, um, <laughs> not those ancient Near Eastern guys. Um, they they kind of cringe at that because they just oh. don't fit in. Uh, to to put oh. it nicely, you know. Michael Heiser. Michael Heiser isn't a modern day evangelical. No, he he wouldn't consider himself that. And uh, now, nevertheless, he definitely does a lot of, you know. Um, teaching among those type of circuits of people who really do want to like learn what he's saying cool. same thing with john walton Derek gilbert and like i said there's a few other individuals that escape me but they're in my cultural background study bible <laughs> um okay. but yeah other than that uh that that's pretty much you know my my okay. you know where i'm at in terms of just fantastic my Christian walk. So would would you consider yourself a like you're obviously would you consider yourself dispensation probably not like you're not a different dispensationalist are you definitely no um I'm definitely not um a dispensationalist for for so many you, reasons yeah. so for the for the listeners um dispensationalists are Christians that act, believe in the actual regathering and restoration of Israel as a nation and in the sequence of the end times, they believe, these Christians believe that Israel will be regathered sometime, what is it, be, uh, after the rapture? Is it, so the church will, the Christian church will be raptured up and then Israel will be gathered. Some, some sequel, I don't want to misrepresent it, but it's something to the effect of that. Correct me if I'm wrong, man. I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You know, I think that, you know, with the information age today, um, we, you know, it, it kind of blew the lid off of the idea that this was just something that, hey, you know, this is just the Bible. This is something that just is believed down through the ages. And then all of a sudden we all do our digging and we realize that, you know, it only, it really was started basically around the 1820s and 1830s with John Nelson Darby and Schofield pretty much kicked it off with the Schofield Reference Bible, which was basically funded by the Jews who were Zionists, which is the reason why dispensationalists hold the views that they have, which created Christian Zionism, which, you know, I've always seen the Black Hebrew Israelites just take all of their work and make it a bit more... <sighs> 
you know, racial than, than most other groups. I mean, but nevertheless, you do have groups like the Christian identity movement that sprung from the um, British Israelism movement who also are a bit kind of Zionist dispensational. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I that, I think that before then, you know, I think the real issue was, is that when you did look at Lutherans, Calvinists, Presbyterians, uh, Methodists, whatever you name it, Roman Catholic, you could, you just go down a list and, basically the ideas of dispensationalism are basically non-existent um okay. and, and that's always been a a big issue okay so and so now to as my final question before we really kind of delve in so y- to sum it up y- you you don't believe you are you would maybe classify yourself as um your the- your theology would be more closer to replacement theology right the christian church has replaced the nation of israel and we're in a new dispensation so on and so forth um well you know i don't know it's it's funny because i think it's interesting that that term actually did come from dispensationalists because of the way that they would hear a lot of their opponents like basically diss their theology and so they coined this term replacement theology from what everybody else is saying but okay so so do so um, do so do I would say for me, um, I prefer the term like fulfillment theology or sure. maybe expansion theology, something like that. Because and so and so no, in, no one's being replaced. So you know? in okay, so do you believe that Israel would will has been replaced by the Christian Church? Or Once it, again, I just got done saying that. You know, I do not um, believe that at all. Like, okay, the, the, okay. So the, I'm just trying to. I'm just the trying phrase to literally misrepresents what everyone else. No, is no, no, no. Okay, well, I'm, you can correct me. I just want. To, I just want to get this correct for the users. This, this oh, is of course. The courtesy yeah. for the users. I'm not yeah. trying to debate this, or I just. Want no, I know, people, I know. I just want the people to understand where you're coming from. Do, do you, you? So you don't believe that the church has replaced Israel, but do you believe that Israel will eventually be regathered into their land? Um, no, that's already happened. You know, I think that's another okay. issue. Um, you know, when you look at all the promises and things like that, there are promises that Jesus and the disciples, um, well, actually Jesus gave and the disciples are, are excited about. And, and that promise there just doesn't seem to be yeah, on okay. that list. So, okay. And, that, and that's fine. I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to debate, debate you on that. I, I, I definitely want to leave that as it is, but I want to do the listeners a courtesy because when we, when we delve into our conversation, there's going to be things that, that we, you say, there's going to be things that I say, there's going to be places we take the conversation and you and the listeners are going to, to wonder, Hey, what is this guy? Where does this guy come from? What does he believe? So, so I definitely want to provide that background as a courtesy to the listeners. So they're not caught off guard. Cool. Right. Right. All right, and also, so, I did have some right. questions for you based on the topic too, or tonight's topic. You know? we'll, we'll 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 engage. We'll 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 definitely get into a discussion, but we we'll take it step by step. So, um, as so, what we're seeing um, resurface is this um, contention, this dispute that um, Israelites have sort of by laying claim to their heritage, they sort of eclipsed the importance of of the salvific work of the messiah um i know definitely i i heard this maybe i heard you speak on this about a year ago so you've been talking about these things i'm sure before 2000 well before 2019 i really kind of just caught wind of you guys like around 2018 um and and so i'm a bit late as far as Many, much much of your work, but I've gone back and I've I've had a chance to view lots of the work, get familiar with what you guys believe. We've obviously all many of us have been talking for a while now, um, and so you've spoken on the fact that Hebrew Israelites they're placing focus on the wrong things, or that you know, and so from in Israelite ears, we're sort of hearing that we've got to either sort of sort of leave this um leave this issue of 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 ethnicity and heritage alone in order to sort of focus by uh, on the work of Christ um where where do you, do you do you still hold that view or where do you, where do you, where do you stand on that 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely do still stand on that heavily. Um, I think that when it comes to the things that we see in the New Testament of what Jesus offers to, you know, all those who believe in him, what he desires. I mean, heck, even, you know, I was recently just reading in the book of Revelation, all of the things that he will offer to the churches individually. Um, based on my cultural background, study Bible, um, Jesus will actually offer them things that he would see um, certain things going on in those churches surrounding areas. For example, there was, I think, a church at Pergamum, and he had promised them a crown of glory, you know, if they go ahead and conquer and obey him. You know, they, they conquer, you know, their their uh, their sins and things like that. They say faithful and obey him. He offered them a crown. You look in Pergamum, and yeah, about 25% of the time, in those archaeological digs, they have found crowns everywhere. It was just a symbol of greatness and things like that. And here comes Jesus and says, oh, well, you follow me. I'll give you a real crown. I'll give you a better one, which goes into the epistle of the Hebrews, where it says that the new covenant is based on better promises. Whatever those promises are, some are in, the, you know, some are found in the New Testament. You know what I mean? Others just says, hey, I'm going to give you a gift with your name, you know. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, why is it that for Christians, Hebrews have to choose one or the other? For the Hebrew, if I can finish the question, if, he, if for the Hebrew, uh, our spirituality is very much tied to our ethnicity. We believe that we are dispersed. We believe that we are disconnected from our heritage. We were blinded and we didn't know who we were, but in this process of regathering, um, we find out who we are, the traditions of our fathers, so that we can come back into the proper spirituality. Why is it that Christians uh, make us choose either or? I think it's because of what it is that you're, you're choosing. You know, if you're choosing something outside of the sphere of the smorgasbord of the of the, the the feast that Christ has given, then all of a sudden you're going to find Christians encouraging you to go ahead and choose what Christ is giving you. And, you know, not these other things that obviously, you know, you would say, oh, Christ has given us those things too. So if you do look at things like, well, you know, we're going to return to our heritage and our tradition of our fathers, I often think about the times where all throughout the New Testament epistles, Paul talks about how I'm so glad that you have not turned away from our traditions. And he never says the traditions of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, he's talking about, you know, the traditions and teachings that came from Christ. You what, know, what book would you be referencing? Sure. Uh, you have First Corinthians chapter 11, um, where he talks about the Eucharist. And, you know, he says, listen, when I come to you personally, I will teach you more things about the Eucharist. Now, of course, we don't know what that is. We just know that Paul showed up there and started showing them, you know, certain things that they should do when they take the Eucharist. And the only leading that we have is early church practices in the early church what they did all the time. And they say, oh yeah, we got this from the, from the apostles. Um, so yeah, you know, when you look at those things, I think, well, that there's nothing in there about what the professing Hebrews are saying, hey, we're gonna go ahead and return to. So it's like looking at a fork in the road. One is going to the left, the other is going to the right. I'm seeing what they're saying, it's going to the left. I'm seeing what the Bible is saying and it's going to the right. And yet they're, they think, that they actually are doing something. If I, can, uh, if I can ask a question. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Paul. Now, mm -hmm. I typically don't, um, I typically don't um, cite the works of Paul, but I realize this is, this is an integral part of the discussion. So and now I'm familiar with the works of Paul. And didn't even Paul recognize the centrality of the Israelite nation as far as um, um, salvation goes, the origin of this, salva this sal salvific agent, if you will, the Messiah? Well, I, I, I don't think so because of the word that you use. You know, you use centrality. When you look at Paul's writings, there's only one 
person that's actually at the center of salvation, you know, and it's actually Christ. He said, you know, I preach nothing but the cross, not the identity, not the seed line, not the, you know, the ethnicity, not the fill in the blank. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think that it's very clear of how he, you know, not only in that, but we all know that if I go in and read Philippians chapter three right now, you'll see um, the very thing that, you know, a lot of professing Hebrews would claim as central and he trashes it as dumb. And then he, here comes Christ. He starts talking about, you know, I, you know, I cast that all away for Christ. Um, so when I look at all of his writings and things, it's hard for me to, to see how people could believe that he's putting his nature, his nation as something central to his faith and Matt, salvation. So real, have, Matt, have you, have you read um, Romans chapter one, verse 16? Um, I'm pretty sure I have, uh, you know, I could definitely pull it up if you, you know, kind of want to, you know, look at some there. Sure. Yeah. All I'll right. Well, it says here in uh, Romans 1, 16, it says, uh, he says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So the power of God unto salvation is, is, is the gospel of Christ, not anyone else, not any other kind of idea, nothing. Then after that, it says, to everyone that believeth. Then he says to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So I so far have no disagreement in what he had just said. So I'm kind of wondering what's the, you know, I, I, I need some help here. Sure. Um, so we have the issue of salvation and salvation is offered to everyone that believes um, and then it gives us two uh, nations, um, and it provides a sequence. We see primacy, and we see um, secondariness, if I could use that term, for lack of a better term. We see a, a, the Jew first and also to the Greek, so to the Greek second. Right. Um, I, also, I also noticed the, 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 the priority that is placed. So we see the Jew first, so the Jew is, has first priority, and the Greek that follows. And this follows, um, is, is consistent with what the Messiah spoke about, um, who he had brought salvation for when he was talking to the um, Canaanite woman, right? Um, even when he talked about being sent unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I see an ethnocentricity, definitely at the very least, uh, a priority in an ethnic group versus another. Would you disagree? Okay. Um yeah, I, I definitely do um, disagree. I think the issue is, is that one of the things that, you know, one of the ways that, you know, and, and I'm not trying to take a jab here, but one of the ways that false doctrines survive is that they have to take a whole bunch of um, snapshot passages and they have to basically put them together to create this narrative that, you know, when you actually put it up against the entire narrative of the Bible, um, you'll see that the Bible is going in a whole different direction. It's not even saying that. So the first thing is, is that notice that this salvation is to everyone. Now we know that if we go and look at other passages that Paul talks about, which, you know, basically outnumber this one here, he always ends up saying that once you're saved, you are no different than anybody else. You're all one in Christ. You know, we, we've all seen these passages. So the moment that a Jew and a Gentile jump into Christ and they're saved, we've seen, you know, all those passages. For there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond or free, for Christ is all in and all, for we are all one in Christ. Um, he's made the, the hostility 
of the two at one and he's making peace. And so if we take all those passages and we look at this one right here, then this goes back into Matthew chapter 10, where you were shown how Jesus came to the Jews first. Um, so this is basically a narrative passage. This is not a doctrinal passage here. This is okay, a narrative so acknowledgement. If I can ask, why do you think Paul used the, used the verbiage, phrased it to the Jew first and, and to and the Greek also? I'm so glad you asked that question. The reason why he did it is because of what I just said right now. Paul is speaking in a narrative way. In other words, he's a Jew. He knows that when he looks it through the Old Testament, he knows that when he had heard all the things that Peter taught him about Jesus, he knows that the Jews were chosen by God to be his holy nation. So that way they could bring forth the Messiah and the Messiah would go okay. ahead and, you know, train up, you know, the Jews to go okay. ahead to bring salvation and all the message that Jesus did all to the nations. Like that's all what right. they were supposed to do. So that's, that's the reason why it says to the Jew first, like they had that assignment, you know, now okay. the issue is, the issue is, is that people don't look at that as a narrative instead they look at it as a doctrine. So when you look at John one, what does he say? He came to his own first but his own received him not. But to everyone else that did, whether you're a believing Jew or believing Gentile, to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. And so you look, Jesus did. He actually went to the lost sheep. He, he did. You know, matter of fact, in Luke's gospel. Israelites. Yes, he, yeah, Israelites. Okay. Matter of fact, he went to, you know, the 70 disciples and told them to just go out. And I didn't tell them where to go. He just said, go out. So he went to, so he went to, so we have, we have Messiah going to the Israelites first. Yes. And so the whole if thing I can I'm ask trying you a to question, say, if I can well, ask before, you a question. Before, 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 I, before you do, the, the final thing I want to say was, is that by the time you end up seeing that this is happening, all of a sudden he goes beyond the Jews and he begins to go ahead and preach to everybody else. And all of a sudden the Jews begin to go ahead and take the gospel to the world. This fulfills Isaiah 49, 6. It said, look, you know, you guys are going to go ahead and be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. It says it's, it's, it's just going to go out. It doesn't say, oh, everywhere you go, it has to go to the Jew first. Like, no, it doesn't say that. It just said the message is going to go out. It's going to start with you. It's going to go all the way out. And that's the reason why. All right. Peter, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to let yeah. you keep going on. I'm, I'm not okay. going to, I'm going to manage the conversation, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because there are specific things I'm trying to get to the surface. Yeah. Um, you, we, 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 you've just readily acknowledged that the gospel went first to the Israelites and then to the Gentiles. Yeah. Now, why do you think the mo why do if, if if it wasn't a matter of 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 ethnicity, if it wasn't a matter of nation first for Christ, why do you think that he didn't why didn't he just go to the Greeks first? Oh, that's simple. I think that, you know, I, I mean this kind of reminds me of things that Paul would say in Romans 9. You know, he always talks about there is a purpose of election. In other words, there's a purpose as a reason why God chooses to do what he chooses to do with who he chooses to do it. If oh. Israel in the Old Testament was, you know, his covenant nation and bride and things like that, then you better believe that, hey, you know what? Your girl gets everything first. And so oh. uh, that was, you know, that was one reason there. And so when you look at that, that goes to show that, yes, they did end up receiving all that first. And then uh, from there, it was supposed to go out and spread to the rest of the world. But okay. you know, the, the right. other okay. thing was, is that when you look at Peter, and this goes back to this whole narrative, right? Peter acknowledges this in Acts chapter three. He says, listen, the gospel came to you first. Indeed. You know what I mean? So it the, the problem is, is that the disciples and all that, they're looking at it as like a, as a narrative that's already happened. Like we're past that chapter and 
the Hebrew Israelites, unfortunately, they look at that and they ignore it and they try to turn it into a doctrine of this primacy. And that's the issue and the impasse. Okay, so that's where the part, you know, where scripture doesn't support the way that so, they're. So when you, encounter, when you encounter Israelites, there's going to be a dispute on when the restoration of, of prophecy happened. And depending on where that conversation leads that will sort of conclude the discussion i want to i want to discuss something no no said. that's not what we end up talking about at all just now well okay so I, i'm not i wasn't wrapping it up uh anyway so i want to i want to discuss something that you mentioned earlier you said you made the distinction between narrative versus doctrine can you define mm-hmm. for us what it means when you say narrative and then also what it means how it differs from doctrine. Sure. Um, matter of fact, I'll actually just give you an example. Um, if you can just define it for us. Sure, I'll define it. So and, then, narrative an, is, and offer an example would be fine as well. Okay, cool. Addition. Yep. So basically a narrative is a, a type of story. Heck, I mean, it's like a parable or something like, you know, that you see, you know, Jesus or disciples or anyone in, in scripture that they're telling some type of story. You know, now, of course, there's a difference between telling the story and laying down some doctrine saying, hey, th- th- I heard there are some issues in Corinth. This is what y'all need to do. You know, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's a different thing. And so here's just, you know, one example. Um, you know, first there's John 1, but that's too easy. Uh, another one is Romans 9. When you have Paul, he says, listen, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience bears witness in the Holy Ghost. What verse is this? Great, oh, verse one. Okay. He says, I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish by myself were a curse from Christ, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, who pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, who are the father. See, he's, he's talking about a narrative. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's all coming from how they just rejected Christ. He said, man, they had all this stuff. And I would curse myself if they just had Christ. But instead, you know, they're glorying in all this other stuff. They'll take that and they'll try to turn it into like, I guess, Paul's trying to say some doctrine. Meanwhile, his heart is venting a narrative about how he feels about his fellow Jews who reject Jesus. Mm-hmm. Whose are the fathers and whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who was God over all, amen. Not as though the word of God is taking an effect. So I don't know. It's like there are certain times where he's venting. Then all of a sudden he'll go into teaching, like he's about to do in verse six. So, so as, and, and, and from this narrative, one can't really draw precedent to as support to make certain claims. I mean, because it's really all, I mean, if you read the Gospels, the Gospels are a narrative, but we draw, um, Christianity draws its doctrines from the narratives of the of the New Testament. You know, it's a thing though. When you oh. say it draws uh, doctrines from the narratives of the New Testament, you know, those stories, you know, they, they have actions that, Jesus has done all throughout. And I think the other, what I'm trying to say is here's an example. They'll end up saying, you know, who are Israelites who pertain to the adoption of glory, the covenants of getting on the law and the service of God and the promises. And they'll take a scripture like that. And they'll try to say, okay, we conclude that all this stuff belongs to us. And you Gentiles, you're more of like a byproduct, you know, you'll, you'll kind of get something else. That, that's the issue, you know? But when you look in chapter eight, he applies adoption to Christians. And I mean, like, or in Ephesians one and two, he applies adoption to Christians. Okay. And I could just go on and on and on. You know, okay, and so, so see that? If, if we're looking at, at, if we're looking at chapter nine, yeah. okay? He talks about in verse three says, "For I wish that I that myself were accursed from, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ by my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises." Okay, here he's stating he's making definitive statements 
about what is, okay? Um, in Romans 1, 16, he's making a definitive statement that establishes order, okay? And he says the Jew first and also to the Greek. So in addition to the Jew who is who holds pr premier place for salvation, okay? Um, he, this, these are very definitive statements regarding the nature of the salvation as it pertains to the world. It's to is and, and, and you've, you've cited the gospels and you've cited the works of Paul that prove just that. I don't, why, why is it a problem that Hebrews draw these things, these principles from, from narrative scripture or letters or things that are, you know, our story or not, you know what I mean? Right. Once again, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question again, because it allows me to dig even into more scriptures that actually prove my point. And, yeah. and I think, I think after I do this, I think that, you know, it's really showing, at least from the audience perspective, they're really seeing that, you know, the more one person hinges on one scripture to kind of, establish a doctrine after a while th their antennas are going to go up because they're gonna like is there anything else so anyway um hmm. there were there were plenty of places in the gospels where jesus said listen the gospel that you guys are going to preach it's going to go from judea to samaria to the ends of the earth once again that's isaiah 49 6 he doesn't say all right, but make sure everywhere you go, make sure it's to the Jew first. You know, the, another one is um, Paul had written a, a, a pastoral epistle to Titus. He called Titus his son in the faith. Titus was a Greek, uncircumcised at that. He sent him to Crete to actually finish a work um, that was started by some other Christians. Um, not one time did he ever say, oh, and by the way, you're down there. Um, make sure you look for some Jews first to, you know, go to establish church. He never, not, not once as he said, not once. And so when you look at all that, it goes to show that, you know, this is a real narrative that they started with the Jews first. Here, you guys are going to carry this message first. You're going to get this message first. And then from there, it's going to go out to everywhere else. The part that's left out is the part that you believe which is hey everywhere that they go they're gonna wake up the jews wherever they go first or wake up and it's not there over and over and over i keep on giving these scriptures but but um, do you ever see do you ever like what what's been established has been established man like you even you even admitted it yourself there's there is a a, a premise a primacy a premier spot that israelite israel the nation of Israel, biological Israel, holds with regard to salvation. Now there are. I, I, I have I'm to I'm not finished. One second. That. One second. I know. I just had to say that. Well, I'm not finished. I know. Um, and, and so we have the, to to be fair to you. There are one West um, Israelites that don't believe in salvation for the Gentiles. They don't believe. Um, how they define salvation may be different. Okay. And then there's a whole population of Israelites that do not agree with that. There are Israelites that say that there is salvation for Israel from regathering from the dispersion. And there is also salvation for Gentiles from the ills of the tribulation. Okay. And that can be supported by scripture. Um, I know that you've so far up until now, you've specialized in a sort of dialogue with Israelites. Many of, um, I'm sorry, one West Israelites. Many of your responses are, are have been constructed from interactions and extensive um, um, depth of, of, of a very deep um, uh, lots of interaction with, with one was Israelites. But for the Israelite that does believe in salvation for the Gentiles, how could you deny them? Okay, so I guess I'll be answering two questions here. 
Um, so I'll go to start with your first one. Um, the first one was on the primacy of the Jews. Um, I do believe that, you know, you and, and many who believe like you are reading heavily into those passages, um, what they're not even saying, simply because you see that Jesus and the apostles um, end up going to the Jew first. The problem is that there's no primacy. What you do see is, is that they're actually going to the Jews first. And what you don't see that is- isn't, That isn't primacy, that isn't- No, and allow me to explain. Now, that's not primacy at all, because when you look at how Jesus and everybody else begins to talk about the Jews, then all of a sudden you see the primacy leaves. For example, you have John the Baptist. He says- But it was there first. Yes, that is right. But I'm saying that wow. the problem is, is that you are reading into those first passages some type of primacy. And I'm about to give an example as to why they're not. So, hmm. for example, um, if you look at like John the Baptist, he says, look, don't end up saying that your Abraham is your father. Look, no, God can make, you know, raise up these rocks to go to be the seed of Abraham. Make sure that you repent. The axe is laid at the tree. So the em emphasis is not on, you know, oh, I'm part of the seed line, so I'm going to be okay. No, it's no. You need to get your act together and be baptized. You look at Jesus and all his parables. He has so many parables of where, you know, there's this great banquet. And, you know, the Jews got invites first, period. You know, he has so many uh, uh, parables about that. But what's the problem? Eventually, they reject the invitation, and heck, they even killed the, the, the son of the one who invited them. And then from there, he ends up saying, well, I'm going to go ahead, or uh, they, they end up saying, well, you know, they should go ahead and just be killed off or something, or just uh, be, uh, have their stuff taken from them. And Jesus says, yes, the kingdom will be taken from you and given to another nation bearing fruit, or the, the sons of the kingdom will be cast into outer darkness. Like, that doesn't sound like some kind of primacy. And then when you go into the disciples, you see what? There is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. Uh, we are all one in Christ. So, you know, that's the issue. If there was this type of primacy, it would continue on um, even when people are in salvation. You know, you would hear this thing about, well, Jews, you know, they're saved and, and you know, they're, they're, they're really saved in a, in a very different way, but it doesn't happen like that. They're, okay, so you acknowledge that there was at some point a primacy, but then at some point the primacy didn't exist anymore? Or? No, once again, I do not for a Kind of sounds like what you said. Oh, no, no, not at all. That's not what I said at all. I use examples of how the Jews were given all this stuff first. And then the fact that they right. rejected it, you know, they actually, uh, you know, you actually had, you know, another nation going ahead and bearing fruit because they decided to do the job. So but Matt, if there was any kind of primacy, then, you know, the way that they would be treated after they were they rejected their stuff would have been different. And but Matt, that, is, it, is it true? Is it true that all of Israel rejected the Messiah? No, which is a reason why replacement theology is such a bad term. Okay, so um, so so to say that the whole nation rejected it's, nah, it's I never to, said that. To suggest it, it's no, it's, I've never suggested. Okay, that. so it, it's really kind of it really kind of is what you suggested because because it, it, you're saying that they, they, they were given the promises and they rejected it. Right, that, I said the exact I'm not same thing. I'm, I'm not finished, Matt. I'm not, I'm not finished. Yeah. Um, yeah I, but, but that's so, no, I'm not I'm No, I'm not finished, Matt. And I got, I gotta, I, I've given you a lot of speaking time. And, I, and I, need, I need you to let me challenge you. Of course. If, you, yeah. if, you're, not, if you're not up for it, we can, we can conclude this. But what I'm, when, I, when I listen to your ideas, I'm going to interject you. I'm going to challenge you. You need to be prepared to slow down. Okay, so can I interject? No, no I'm, not, I'm not finished. I haven't even begun. And, I, okay. and, I'm going to, and I'm going to continue to challenge you. And you're not going to control the, the pace of this manage. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm not and I, and to I do that, do, go, ahead. This, go ahead. Gotta, no, I'm, I, I, need to, I need to really take time to, to, so, that, so that this is clear. Sure. Okay? Like, I'm going to be gracious to you, man. I'm going to give you time to speak. And I think, I think up until now, I've, I've proven that. But if you think that I'm just going to let you just keep like bantering on, no, I'm going to let you get your ideas out, but it's at, the, at my discretion 
and I'm going to stop you when I need to stop you, and I'm going to challenge you when I need to challenge you. That's fine. And, and I'm just asking if I could do the same. It doesn't have – this is not your show. This is, I know. This is not your show, and we can always we, – we can always – schedule a discussion on your panel and you can control the pace of the discussion that that's what your platform is for but we're doing i know that i just thought we were talking about equality but but that's okay my listeners i've been fair i've been fair with letting you speak and i think that when you Mm -hmm. play this over you're going to realize that you got a lot of speaking time okay i'm yeah that's fine that's fine at some point i am going to stop you and I'm going to intermittently stop you because I'm going to challenge you on certain things. And I, and I, you, you just I have no problem with that. Okay. You have to be prepared for it. And it, yeah, should, of course. And it shouldn't be a problem for you to stop when I, when I interject. Okay. This, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do as a host. I'm going to manage this discussion. For, right. Yeah. You're for, supposed to do that. I'm just I'm asking going, if I'm, I could do I'm that going too. to do it for my listeners. I'm going to right. Do- and I'm doing it for listeners too. I just want to know if I could do that too. That's all. Well, whatever, whatever that entails, whatever, whatever you've got in mind, that's going to be negotiated on my platform. And if I don't, and if I don't agree with it, it's not going to fly. But what we can do is mm-hmm. we can so when you be, when you come on somebody else's platform, you're their guest and you're subject to their judgment of how to of how to engage the conversation. Okay, That's true. And if you don't agree with that, you have the power, Matt. You have the power of choice to engage in a discussion or to dismiss yourself for this, from the discussion. But what mm-hmm. I'm asking you, I brought you on in order to explore your ideas about a certain thing, not about what you think you should discuss on my show. Like, right. No, I never. No, we already. Okay, so, 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 so I'm going to stop you when I need to stop you. And I'm going to need you to be okay with me stopping you. I'm fine with that. I okay. just want to know if I was able to do that too. Wonderful. You know? I, I don't know. I will figure that okay. out though. Okay. All right. Okay. But, but I, I would hope that you, you trust me so far. Because, I do. I do. So okay. far. Yeah. I'm really trying to be fair and I want you to feel comfortable with sharing your ideas Okay. Now I know that it's a challenge and we're going to come up with things that, 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 that we disagree with. I think respecting each other's disagree, you know, disagreements, each other's perspective will really kind of facilitate like, you know, the amicable discussion part. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to get on your case. I'm just going to lightly challenge you. Um, um, it, cause it, it, so, so going back to what we were talking about, like when you say that that the Jews were given promises and they were given a thing, obviously it didn't go to the Gentiles first. It came to the Jews first. So that establishes primacy right right there. Like I, I don't see how one can use the word first and then also and then not suggest a priority or a primacy or, a, you know, an order of a place. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So again, I know exactly what you're saying. You're saying, look, salvation and the, the gospel and the, the gift of the Messiah, it all came to the Jews first. And we all agree with that. And again, the okay. problem is, is that you look at that, that first thing there as some kind of primacy. And again, I just keep on bringing up the very thing that so far you or no one is trying to deal with or interact with, which is, is that when they were brought it, they ended up rejecting it. Obviously not all of them, but when they rejected it, there were certain passages where Jesus said, well, listen, I'm going to go ahead and give this to another nation and the sons of the kingdom are going to be cast into outer darkness. Like if, if people really do have primacy, you don't talk that way about them. Also, again, when you look at Paul and how he ended up witnessing and uh, sending out um, Titus, or when you look at Jesus, when he ends up talking about how this whole thing is going to go out, they literally ended up saying that it's going to go throughout the whole world. And they never made this, this doctrine or this teaching that wherever you got to go, you have to wake the Jews up first. I gave the example of Paul with Timothy. I gave the example where Jesus said to Samaria and Judea and all the rest of the world. I gave all those examples. I gave the example where Peter said, hey, look, 
all this stuff came to y'all first. He's speaking in past tense, showing that the boat is going. I showed that that's the narrative. I laid all that out, and so far, no one has touched it. Not even okay, you. Okay, you just so, go back to Romans 1. and, and keep, you know. If I can address that, I think it's because it's not really necessary to address it, man. It's really Ah, uh, okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because the the... the as we as we see with the Israelites, there was a commission to the circumcision and a commission to the non-circumcision. So there's a whole branch of the church that was responsible for going directly to the Israelites. Okay, so the Israelites from the days of the Messiah had always been a priority to preach to. Now, clearly, Paul in Galatians two establishes his commission to the non-circumcision. Now, you you're going to encounter Israelites that say that non-circumcision are dispersed Israelites throughout the earth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that. And we don't, we don't have to get into that contention. I'm concerned with, with the language and, and you know, like either the notion is there or it's not. Okay. And I, and it sounds like you acknowledge it for the, for the listeners. Let's, let's do this real quick. I'm going to read uh, Romans 1 16 again, and then I'm going to, I'm going to read the definition, Merriam Webster's definition of primacy. Okay. <clears throat> Romans 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So I say that is establishing primacy for the Jew, for the Israelite, okay? Um, and so, um, so anyone who wants to deny that that doesn't establish primacy I'm going to read the definition of primacy. Primacy, Merriam-Webster's here. Okay, the state of being first as in importance, order, or rank. Preeminence. Okay, preeminence. Now let's read preeminence. Give me a second. One second. Preeminence. I'm going to read the definition of preeminence. Preeminence. The quality or state of being preeminent. Superiority. Now that's just, we're just working with English language here. This is not my opinions. We're going, we're reasoning from the text. We see to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Um, we can also see the notion of preeminence or pre primacy also from the days of the Sinai covenant. Now, if we're dealing with what Paul says in Romans chapter 9, it really underscores that notion of primacy and preeminence. 9.4, who are the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Gentiles didn't receive the promises. The Gentiles only received the promises through the Israelite people. Now, I'd also like to turn everyone's attention, and Matt, if you want to weigh in on this, um, you can. We're dealing with the notion of ethno ethnicity as it is tied, it is inextricably woven and inseparable, part and parcel to the spirituality of the Israelite people. And we're, we're finding this, uh, and I'm laboring to find this in Paul's, Paul's writings. I'm doing, I'm digging in Paul's writings to find this principle. Um, uh, I think this may be the one of the, if not the last, one of the last passages of scripture I would cite by Paul. Um, in, in Romans 11, he talks about the branches that are grafted in. In the chapter of Romans 11, he makes a distinction between the two olive trees and how the listeners were part of a wild olive tree. And after the gospel was given, they were able to be grafted in to the olive tree, okay? Well, who is the olive tree, okay? These are questions that have to be answered. If, if it's not Israel, if Israel is not the center, okay, of this whole 
idea of salvation, okay? And, and, and when I say Israel is the center, that includes Christ who is Israel. You can't separate Christ from his people. He came for his people. He came to redeem his people, to liberate, to save his people. Um, his people, Israel. Christ came for, for Israel. He's the, he saved Israel. He's a servant to Israel. Right? Obviously, he's king, but a king serves. It's definitely a service. <laughs> I count it a service, probably an undeserved service, uh, as an Israelite to have a Messiah save me from captivity. That is a service. All right? He's, a, he serve, he's to serve Israel. He taught Israelites to serve. Okay? So this notion of, of Israel... No, your heritage can't be can't be um, emphasized, and that it's somehow um, separate from from you know, and, and maybe even like counterintuitive or conflicting um, with with your your heritage, or with, I'm sorry, with um with the salvation work of Christ. Like it's it's a little bit like you know Christians have to be able to, to establish this with reason and sensibility. Like, as I said before, and to conclude my point in Paul, you have this notion of ethnic importance um, and we never lose, and we don't lose sight of that. It is only by a, by a claim that one is able to make that claim, but to, to find it, to, to disprove it within the works of Paul, it's, it's, it's impossible. The words are there. Um, did you want to weigh in on that, Matt? Sure. Um, yeah, definitely did. Um, I, and I think, well, you know what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of work myself backwards here um, just to kind of just hit on everything you said. You know, basically when it comes to Romans 11, yeah, that is one place that, professing Hebrews go to say, hey, look, it looks like we are that tree. And therefore, anyone that comes into salvation, it looks like they got to cling on to us, you know, and at some level, I could definitely understand that, you know, I could definitely see that. But the issue is, okay. is that I, I keep saying that once you look at all of scripture, um, the picture does kind of change. While he is using this example of Israel being like a, a olive branch and you know you had the unbelieving Jews who were broken off because they rejected the Messiah and after that you had the Gentiles coming on back you know or not back but coming on into you know that olive tree which is Israel you also have to keep in mind that Paul had often spoken about always being in Christ he spoke about that so much it's literally ridiculous and I think once again he gets that from Peter because I believe that basically Jesus did say in John 15 he said I am the vine I am the true vine you know and he said he who abides in me will be you know will abide I will abide in him and they will bear much fruit and so once you look at that I can understand when you say well Christ is Israel and so if that's the case you know the real Israel tree is actually Christ you know who gives us you know the tree of life that heals the nations revelation 22 so again um you know i think another thing that you said was when you look at this term first in romans 1 16 you know you went into how it means like a primacy you went into preeminence and and this is the whole thing that christians have been trying to trying to say you guys will look into these scriptures and you will miss what the scriptures are saying to you because you're excited over something that the scriptures ain't even saying. So when I oh. look in the New Testament for the word preeminence, it's found in Colossians where the Christians focus on Christ as creator. When you look in the New Testament, you have to look at the word first and in Webster's dictionary, look at primacy, which leads you to preeminence, which leads you to basically focus on how, you know, you were the ones to first receive salvation. So it totally misses you know, the whole point of the word preeminence. Matt, I don't, I don't think, I don't think preeminence being mentioned in Colossians, 
uh, any way ca uh, counters or contradicts the way that the uh, the notion of primacy in Romans chapter one. Uh, so I, I don't really know how that supports you. You, you said and okay. therefore you concluded as if it had some yeah. sort of logical connection. Well, the reason why that I did is because, you know, it's all about the focus. So if I look in Colossians and they uh -huh. use the word preeminence and it's about Jesus, it's about him being creator. Well, then that's totally different as the, for the purpose as to why you looked for the word preeminence in Webster's, which isn't even uh, talking about, uh, you know, being the first to receive salvation or anything like that. So it's like you, you take this one word and you, you talk about one thing and yet I can find the same word in scripture and it's not talking about what you're talking about, which goes to the whole point I keep on saying well, that their words focus are, words is on are used, something. Words are used in different ways all over scripture. Matt. That's right. So I don't, I don't understand just because one word is used in a certain way, in a certain context, in this, in, in scripture A, doesn't mean that it doesn't mean what it, what it doesn't mean in scripture B, you know? Like, I mean, well, first, no one's really arguing that's that. That's elementary language. When one says first, and then also, it, it's this very simple elementary idea. Right. I think the issue is, is that what are we talking about when we say first? When I look in Colossians, the Christians say, oh, preeminence. Oh, Jesus, creator. When you use the word preeminence, you end up saying, oh, salvation goes to us first. To the no, point that's, where... no, that's Paul. I'm using Paul in Romans 1 16. It's yes, his own, like his I, own words. Yes, I get that, but his word was not preeminence. Uh, his word was first, which you had to derive from Webster's that leads it to another word, leads it to another word, and you know what I'm saying. Um, so that that so was my issue. So Matt, if there's a problem, then like what what's the problem when when the the idea of preeminence involves an order of things? I just clearly read the primacy involves an order of things when you. When you name some, when you give something a number, a cardinal number, all right, when you assign it a number, when you assign something as first, that establishes premise, and, and it can't be interpreted any other way. I, I mean, once again, I definitely agree with what okay. you're saying. You okay. know, the issue is, is that when I bring up what I'm trying to say, you don't say anything. You just keep repeating what you're saying. Well, and I'm people are waiting... To, for you to interact with what I'm saying. I'm interacting with what you're saying. You know, I'm waiting for you to interact with what I'm saying. But, but no, the point, the point, Matt, is I, I made a claim and I have scriptures that back that claim. And you're, you're trying to counter my claim. And I'm not sure you have a leg to stand on because here I'm clearly using scripture. I'm using, I'm using the Bible. I'm using Paul's words to to support my point now your argument doesn't seem to be with me it really seems to be with paul but i think again that the very words that you say is actually what your problem is because again i you you looked at the word first and you had to go to webster's and from there you looked at the word primacy which led you to the word preeminence me What's i didn't even have problem? to do that. no no wait i'm not done yet me i didn't even have to do that I just looked at Colossians 1.14 and boom, there it is, preeminence. And it immediately talks what, about Jesus. I don't understand what the problem is, man. So the problem is, is that every time that you make a certain emphasis and focus, it's never on what the scriptures are saying. In Colossians, in, in Colossians it's about... I just used about, Romans 1.16. I'm going to compare it at the Romans 1.16 now. In Colossians, the focus is Jesus, right? He is the first, he's the preeminence. In Romans 1.16, the focus is the gospel, for salvation, that's what, the focus. And what about and, in Romans 1, 16? Yeah, I already just said it right now. I said the focus is what? The gospel unto salvation. You know, okay. so that's right. So I'm saying that every time that you guys take a focus in scripture, it's never what the people are really like saying and focus on but yet the very word that you use i went to another scripture to show that up oh, we it leads us to jesus he says to the jew first and yeah. then to the greek 
Yes, that is not the focus. The focus of that whole verse is the gospel is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. That's why there's a semicolon. That's <laughs> you know, uh, after that part. That's fine that, that that's so, what you, that's fine with that you that you believe that, man. You can believe that all you want. But what's undoubtable here is that you have Paul saying the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Semicolon. And that semicolon, because he's going to, he's going to detail, qualify who he's speaking of. And he's going to give, he's going to establish order. And he does that by his words. Right. So notice that the main point to the was Jew before first, the semicolon. And then after that was the additional remark. To, and that is to the Jew first. And then to the and also to the Greek and in Romans nine, okay. <laughs> he he so you, re, he reestablishes preeminence. He talks about the, the 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 promises, the covenants, the law was given to the Israelites. Yes, he ends up saying that all those things were given to the Israelites. The problem is, is that you draw a wrong conclusion from that. Remember how I showed you earlier? The just wrong conclusion. The that, oh, 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 yep, just here. The wrong out. conclusion that Israel is preeminent. Um, no, the wrong conclusion that Israel is continually, continually at primacy. Um, yeah. So, like I was. Why saying, wouldn't they be? Because they, for one they ended up, you know, rejecting it, a good bit of them. And then for two, that that was not the narrative. The narrative was, is that the gospel was to spread out, period. Like so, that's so if I can So if I can interject, we okay. know that we know that not all of Israel would accept the Messiah. We know that the prophets speak of the elect, those who are elect. We know that the Messiah talked about those sheep who are his okay so we're talking we're still talking about the supremacy the, the primacy the preeminence of israel via the elect the elect of israel once again you you're saying that you're talking about the preeminence of of israel and i keep on asking you where in scripture is that preached as like a doctrine to the point where you have to go ahead wherever you spread the gospel, you have to go to Jews first, you have to wake up the Jews first. That's what I keep on asking. You and I keep on looking at the same passages that show how Jesus went to the Jews first, how you know the apostles and there all you that. Go. It started out you in just Judea. Said it. We right. There we, you go. Uh, no, no, that's not there. That's not there. You go. I'm telling you what we've been <laughs> I'm doing. Not. No, yeah, no. I'm telling you what you and I have been doing so far that we both agree on. We both agree that we look at all these passages and we see how Israel was given the gospel and the Messiah first. We all see that. There you the problem go. Is, right there. Yeah. The problem is, is that the conclusion that you draw from that. You think that that means that as this message continues to spread out, as it was prophesied to do, you think that that means that as the message goes on, it has to continue to go to the Jew first. And that is a part with all of my examples that I've given that that is not taught in scripture. It's not demonstrated in scripture. Nobody does it. And so far, again, I lay this at your feet and anybody else so far, you have said nothing except to just continue to go to the same scriptures and say, Oh, we're first, but you're not dealing with what else I'm saying. I'm dealing with the conclusion that you're drawing from and you're not dealing with what I'm trying to, you know, have an issue with you here. Okay. So you if know. I can, so if I can take some time to address my listeners, I think um, for my listeners, I think this is where we see um, a fundamental disagreement that goes, that goes back to his belief on, on Israel being regathered and restored. If you don't believe that Israel is going to be regathered and restored from dispersion, you're liable to believe that Israel has lost its primacy or that it's no longer uh, of prime importance. But, but for people like myself who believe that um, 
prophecy in Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 10, prophecy of Moses, um, we do believe that Israel be, will be restored. And in, 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 in preeminence and, pre, and primacy is established in those prophets from the, from the time of the prophets of old. Um, if we think about a nation being restored, all right. We believe that our nation is first, not only because, not only because Elohim said it. He said our the blessing of the covenant would be that we are the head and not the tail. Okay, um, but also if we just think practically that if a nation is going to be restored, there is going to be a government established. Okay, we have a king, and a king has counselors. A king has ministers. And all those counselors and ministers and princes of the tribes will be restored. And to, and, and, and to suggest that somehow Gentiles will, will hold primacy or that Israel no longer matters. You have, the only person who could lead Israel is Israel. The people of a nation govern the affairs of the nation. The, the nature of a captivity is that another nation governs the affairs of your nation and we believe that captivity will be repealed and done away with and we will come back into our heritage and govern the affairs of our nation by the governance the rulership of the messiah okay so i'm gonna go ahead and respond to you know just the things that you said there by starting at another relevant point that i didn't get to respond to um one thing that you did say was you said listen I see this type of primacy of, you know, to the Jews first as a doctrine, as something, hey, we got to do because, you know, you look at the strategy or whatever of, you know, the apostles. You see Peter, um, he went to the Jews and Paul, he went to the Gentiles and people, you know, they read that from what Paul basically said to the Galatians and Romans too. The issue is, is that you have God himself, you know, leading Peter in Acts 10 to go ahead to Cornelius and then after that the rest is history when Peter's up there in Acts 15 in the Council of Jerusalem talking about hey you know what the Gentiles also receive the Holy Ghost they're going to be saved just as we are which kind of feeds into a difference of the way salvation is received so far Peter sounds like he's saying a bit of any equality you know and again you had said that when it comes to salvation, it's a little different for Jews because they're going to consider something else about salvation in terms of getting the land back. And the Gentiles are going to be, well, they're going to go ahead and be saved from tribulation and that's going to be their salvation. That is a direct dispensational view of salvation. In other words, before dispensationalism, such a view on salvation didn't even exist until John Nelson Darby in 1830s. Um, you know, and Peter is an obvious example of that because he's saying, look, hey, they're going to be saved just like we are. Then after that, you had Paul. He got kicked out of three Grecian synagogues. You know, you could read the best one in Acts 13. He got so frustrated with trying to go in and converse with the Jews, but they wouldn't believe him. What did he say? He said, you know what, fine, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And so you can see this kind of inter- mingling or whatever they did just didn't stick oh i'm gonna go here and go there no they literally did what jesus said it's gonna start with judea it's gonna start with y'all and it's gonna spread out you know so again i look at all these things romans 116 you know you repeat it like crazy but it, it saddens my heart that it sounds like you're more excited about being first than you know being in, in salvation I don't, I don't see what the problem is. That's what, if that's what was prophesied and dictated by the creator of heaven and earth, I don't see what the problem is. So it was prophesied that you would be more excited about being first than actually receiving salvation. It was prophesied that I would be first. So if I'm, if I'm going to be excited about that, I don't, what, what's the problem if the creator. The problem is, is that what I said just right now, it seems to me that by your theological bank account and everything that you preach on Facebook and everything else is, is that you are more excited about being first uh, than actually just being saved, period. Well, you know, that's your, that, that's, that's the, your evaluation, Matt. You're, what right, I'm, right, what, based on your actions. Well, well, and so that's the point of this whole discussion. Like, okay. like Christians are, are 
they're making evaluative statements about what Israelites believe instead of opening up the dialogue. And, and, and now, now when you discuss with, with One West, you may be able to make that argument. I think I've met some One Westers that, that are pretty balanced in the discussion. Um, and so like, they don't, they don't say, oh, my race is more important than the salvific work of, of, of the Messiah. Like, I think even on the One West side, you will get is, like One West Israelites that will deny that, that when Christians make that statement. And that's, and, and that's dangerous. Like, it's not good for dialogue because, and it's mainly dangerous for yourself because you're really shortchanging yourself on understanding a group of people. Um, now, and, and, and also that's it's definitely the case with, with moderates. Moderates, definitely, I don't see this idea that moderates place a, you know, quote unquote moderates, that they place uh, an importance of ethnicity over salvific work. To me, it's important, and I think I speak for moderates and one less when I say I, we don't make, we don't rank the importance. It's what it's you Christians that make that statement and say that we do. Yet you sit up here and you say, "Hey, but the scripture says we're first. I mean, Jesus said a man will be known by his fruits. You know, it's like, I mean, I'll give you another example. You end up talking about how you will hold primacy as a nation and you guys will rule as a government, you know, as, as that's kings. not saying that's not saying it's more important than what Christ did on the cross. You may, you may not actually say it with your mouth, but the fact that this is what you preach about, it seems that you're more excited about that than well, see, actually and, just being and said. Do you see, do you see that that's an evaluation that you made? Right, but it's it based seems, on your action. It seems to you. It seems to you. It's not yeah, it's but, not a definitive it's it's not anything based in 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 a, in, obser- in an observation. Like you can't you can't So so even though I said it's based on what I'm observing of you, you're gonna say it's not based on observation. So it's based on your observation, but it's based it's not like it's subjective. It's your opinion. And yet even though you may say it's my opinion, like I could look at your theological bank account, everything that you preach about, you know, through your rumble room, all that, I can look at the majority of what you, you rah, rah about. And I can look at all that and it could match exactly what I'm saying. And you could still say, no, nope, no, nah, that, that's, that's not true. So listen, Matt, like me saying, me being happy about my, about connect, reconnecting to my heritage. Mm-hmm is not is how is that saying that it's that how is that making a comparison of value between my heritage and the salvific work of of the messiah simple because i even remember times before where you know i would talk to you about hey do you believe um you know about jesus's blood being shed for your sins and all this other stuff and meanwhile you know, you didn't even believe that there was a new covenant yet, even though Jesus said like, well, this is the blood of the new covenant, you know, in my blood. And so I look at those things. I think to myself, you know, you're iffy on things that, you know, that obviously Jesus and the apostles and everyone is is excited about. Matt, 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 have I ever, have I ever told you explicitly have I ever have you have I ever told you or stated on any comment board or any live, hey Matt, I think my ethnicity is more important than the salvific work of Christ on the cross. No, you have never once at all on any Facebook, Twitter, whatever, have come out and just said, hey, you know, my ethnicity is more important and I'm more excited about that than uh, Christ's work on the cross for me. You now, never now, said that. Now, now, has any as has any Christian apologist ever asked a Hebrew, "Hey, what's more important, your ethnicity or the salvific work of Christ?" Has have do you know any Christian apologists that have asked that question in any Israelites who have answered? Me, yeah, I, I asked that question, and you and know what so, they tell me? Yeah, um, there there was one. Now this is this is recorded, okay? Okay. I, I asked him, and um, 
he he said his lineage, and okay. I, I, I was shocked. You know, now of course, there and what were ca- others. what camp there, was now, he? Of course, where was he uh, from? What camp was he from? I don't think he was a part of a camp or at all. Um, oh. But but yeah, again, uh, now what was his name? Him, what was his name? Say his name. I I wish I knew, but I tell you what, I will give you the link. But uh, now, of course, the majority of others would just say, "Well, yeah, I'm more excited about Christ." But again, that's not what I'm I'm focusing on. Uh, say, my say, argument that one, is, say that one more time. Say that one more time. I said, but but that is not what I'm focusing on. I am not focusing. No, you said on something finding, about the majority. What is not the majority? Yeah, I said the majority of them would say the latter. That hey, I'm more excited about being in Christ. The majority it, of the Israelites okay. say that, right? Now, but now, again, now, that's, that's not even, my. But again, that's not my argument. My argument is, I look at what your life is saying. I look at what you're preaching and what you're excited about. That's what I count as what you are, you know, really in it for and really looking forward to. No matter what you confess. Okay. You know that. That's so, Matt, when 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 you when you say when you make definitive statements about what Israelites believe, you're gonna have to provide these receipts. Now, I'm not. I have saying, no problem with that. Like, so, and I'm just and as a general principle, because it's, okay. it's really kind of it's really kind of sloppy on the Christian apologists, uh, on the urban apologist, Christian apologist uh, part. Well, I'm, I'm not an apologist, but I, I get what you're saying, though. To make a statement, to make definitive statements about what another believes, and not have the receipts to back it up. Okay. Okay. So, like, when you have a general, when you make a general statement, you gotta have a body of of receipts to make sure. that general statement. Um, okay. And that's a pretty, pretty like. You may have a lot of time now that we're all quarantined. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But um. But but but. What I'm asking, what I'm challenging people like Eric Mason, people like Nefernity, people like Vocab Malone and G-Con, um, pro- provide, be able to provide those receipts. If, if, if you think that we, that as an Israelite community, One West or moderate, that we have made comparative statements and evaluations on the value of our ethnicity versus the salvific work of Christ, then please provide those receipts. Okay. I don't think it's fair for you guys to say, these guys are ethnocentric and all they do is place their ethnicity over, over salvific work of the gospel. Because, because what, what we have is we have, a, we have a large pocket of Israelites that include one Westerns and moderates who are saying, hey, no, that's not the case. Why does it have to be? This is a false dilemma and it is a logical fallacy. It is not good Christian. It is not good apologetics and it doesn't reflect well on the Christian apologetic community. Okay, can I respond? Sure, absolutely. Okay, so I want you to honestly, as a man, compare what you just emphasize with with what i'm about to say okay we're on a a live show right now that's called ethnocentrism versus spirituality you know i i had a somewhat of an issue with this this the topic anyway because it, it seems in some sense like a false dilemma but you know, of course, I look up what the word eth- ethnocentrism means, and it does mean like, hey, you know what? One ethnic- ethnicity and one's culture is superior to, you know, the cultures and ethnicities of others. Like, that's what it means. And, you know, so we're talking about some type of supposed biblical ethnocentrism versus, you know, whatever spirituality is. You end up going to Romans 116, and I point to it and I say, Oh, look, there's a gospel. The main thing that Paul is talking about here is the gospel. There's a colon or a semicolon, and after that semicolon is the additional details. The main course part that he wants you to know is about how powerful salvation is and what it is, what the gospel is, you know. And meanwhile, you look at that and you say, Oh, look, it. it 
it says to the Jew first, you know, which feeds your whole thing about, hey, I want receipts. And I mean, if, if you really want receipts, I could just go in and use this entire conversation. Matt, Matt, I'm you, pointing to everything and saying, hey, that's not in scripture. And you're like, yes, it is. Matt, the issue so is, the if issue you're going to say, if you're going to say, hey, Christians are saying, hey, you guys are getting more excited about this ethnocentric stuff versus just being in Christ and being saved and, and hey, Romans one sixteen and there it is. And yet you're Matt, the it. issue is that you Christians say that us Israelites apply a compare we make a comparative we can make a comparison as far as far as the worth of 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 claim of finding your heritage and being excited about your heritage. And, and the salvific work of Christ. You guys are saying that we deem it more important than the salvific work of Christ. And that's not true. That's why it's a false dilemma. Right. I keep on telling you that you could say to your blue or red or green or white or whatever in the face and say, oh, it's not true. Oh, it's not true. Oh, it's not true. Oh, it's not true. You could say that all day long. But if you're going to go ahead and sit up here and try to, to say that, hey, us being first is in scripture or us being first is this. It is. You know, it's, it's right, yeah. And you're going to go ahead and say, oh, oh, it, it, it is, and, and we're first. And yet you're going to say, oh, but I'm more excited about being in Christ. Like, that's hard for someone to kind of accept. Well, <laughs> you you're, know? you're, you're, um, you're uh, making, I mean, <laughs> in the, in the Christian mind, in the Christian mind, you're making it in either or situation. Like, me being excited about my heritage is one thing and then that's that's one that's one discussion but me saying that my heritage or thinking that my heritage is more important than the salvific work of christ that's a whole separate conversation and israelites have not done that okay really? well then i can just boil it down to two questions one which is more important to you your your nationality and ethnocentrism or christ i don't i don't put a value on on any of them. I don't make a comparison. Not even on Christ. I don't make a comparison. Look, Christ is, in, he's important to my identity as an Israelite. Is he more important though? Is he more important? No. Oh, he, so you're, okay. So why would he be more important? Like, really? Uh, I, I could give you a reason why, because <laughs> y you could definitely know uh, everything about like who you are and all this stuff. And then you could just go ahead and just pretty much like, you know, I guess like deny Christ. And then when you actually die and you have to stand before him and his father, then he'll deny you, even though you have discovered who you are and your heritage. You see that? So there's somebody else who may not know their heritage at all, right? They may not even know that they're a Jew at all, at all, but they know Jesus and they're excited. And all of a sudden they, they die in him. And all of a sudden they stand before Jesus. He says, come on home. When you fed the hungry, you did this unto me come on home and meanwhile man. this person has a clue what he is so <laughs> you know. man, i'm telling you man, i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you okay. now, now if, if, if what would be interesting is to see you the likes of you g con marshall forbes faithful to god actually start hosting some you, you do a better job than the, than, the, than the others mentioned but to do a be fair and and question israelites and ask them the answers that you want to know. It, it would be more fair and more respectable on the urban apologist community side, the Christian community, to ask the questions instead of presume those things. I don't. Right. I, that, that's the thing. I don't, I'm I, asking you questions I now don't, and all I don't, throughout. And I, don't and I make my presumptions any, from one second, your Matt, One second, Matt. <laughs> so, I, don't, I, don't pres, I don't make any any no, no value i don't pre, i don't value put any value or compare the value of 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 eth, of, of her, uh, knowledge of my hair ethnic heritage over christ it's it's all intertwined you have to you have to state that a people makes that separation or makes a comparative um, evaluation of the of the worth of the two in order for that 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 discussion to even have legs we don't do the, the community who in the community does that what camp what sect does that like name them okay so seats. all right I'll, I'll i'll do you one even better pakistino lee as a man 
what do you you put out into the social media more uh things about your your heritage or things about like christ and being saved in him i don't know man i, I haven't counted i haven't okay. counted and, okay, and, then. And, and in order to, to, to address the principle of, of that question, what I, what I talk about more doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean I value those things more. I speak on, on the needs of my community. If there is a certain need, if there is a certain space or, or thing that needs to be supported or buttressed, I'm going to address those things and I may address them more frequently for that season. And then so, I, you, so I, what I, you're saying is, I ma- I'll you. manage. I manage the things. That's how. That's a very. That's you know. Okay. That's not a very good, effective way to measure what one deems important. Okay, so what you're I'm saying te- is, you I'm put a- things out in the airways that that are needed, but the things you put out in the airways that are needed, you know, it's it, you, that's not an argument to say that hey, there are other things that I value that are of greater importance. I just don't put it out there because it's not needed, which leads me to my other question. Again, which one is more important to you? Knowing who you are and your nationality and things like that, or being saved in Christ and being one in him? I, I don't put, I don't, I haven't put a value on the two. I didn't I'm, ask you to I'm, put a value. I'm a, I said I'm which a one teacher. is more important to you. I'm a, t- I'm a teacher. I'm going to, I'm going like the way I'm trained as a teacher is to look at the needs of people who may be in need of information. If I see a lack, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about. First people. of all, I'm Matt, this is you. not this is not your show, and you're not and you're not going to initiate a hot seat just uh, just I, off your own. I'm, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, not I'm sorry, trying. Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm speaking, and I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to respect my my role as the host. I'm speaking. Right, I will, and, but you're, and you're I'm not addressing answer my question though. And, well, if you are so interested in me answering your question, we're gonna we'll after this show is done, we're gonna get in, we're gonna get together, and we're gonna schedule whatever hot seat you want. All right. I don't. But for don't now, but for now, seat. but for now, you're you're on you're on my platform, and I'm it's happy true. to have you so long as the so long as the discussion ain't civil as I see fit. So, right. so as I was saying, as I was saying. And, and that's just that's just how it goes, Matt. Like, if it was your platform, I have to yield the same way. Okay. Now, as I was going to say before, I'm a teacher. My job is to address the needs of of the younger generation, people who may not have information, people who may be missing it. I I I look at what I I I see what's necessary to speak on, and I speak on those things to say that. That just because in a certain particular range of time that I, because I speak frequently on these issues, I, I somehow value that thing more than another area of theology. That's just, just as a methodology, as a, as a theory, in theory, that's a, that's a lousy way, a lousy way to evaluate how, how much somebody values a certain thing versus another thing. It's lousy in, in theory. Because, because, because it, it, it just, it, it's a false dilemma. Like I may just be speaking on these things because I see fit, not because, not necessarily because I deem it more important than another area. That's what I'm talking about. It's a false dilemma. It's a logical fallacy. You Christian apologists, you Christians, you guys need to stop it. Because really it's more damaging to your own witness sensible Christians are looking at you and they're going to see you got what you're doing and they're going to be like, Hey, why is he doing that? And it's going to, it's going to, it's going to cost you. All right. Um, can I respond? I got, I got about, I got about 10, 15 minutes, Matt. Um, okay. All right. Because, yeah. because I gave my word that I would, that I would allow you to ask me questions. We can spend the rest of this 15 minutes, at least mm, 10 minutes of it, um, responding to your questions. If you would like to extend this conversation on over to your platform or to a subsequent discussion on this platform, we can do so. But I'm going to give you about 10 minutes and I'll let you, I'll let you drill away. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I guess, um, you know, uh, 
you know, my, my first question definitely would be, um, you know, if you do believe that, you know, Israel is to always go ahead and uh, receive the gospel first, like no matter what, like perpetually, continually, um, please show me somewhere in scripture where this is taught or at least that this is being done like perpetually, like it doesn't, like it, it starts over and over again. Is there anywhere in scripture where the apostles, Jesus, you know, they continue to go to the Jews first period and, and they never stop, you know, they go to Jews first and the Gentiles and they teach others to do this. Okay. That was pretty long winded. I'm going to ask you to, re I'm going to ask you to pitch your question one more time. Sure. Is there anywhere in scripture where you see um, the apostles uh, constantly going to the Jews first and then the Gentiles and they never break formation and they actually teach others to do this? I uh, mean, that's, that's, a, that's a really, that's a loaded question. Do you want to break that question up into some, 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 some individual questions? Sure. Okay. Um, let's see here. When Paul had wrote his, you know, pastoral epistle to Titus, is there anywhere in that epistle where he basically charges or commands Timothy, I mean, um, Titus to go ahead and go to the Jews first in any town that you go as you continue holy to set up churches? Holy, holy Matt, Matt, that's a, that's a totally different question. No, it's not. It's the same thing. And and I can I could see I could just see this is why I really didn't want to do this. I can see where this is going. This is gonna this is gonna lead to you saying, Oh, you didn't answer my question over and over. Like you need to like No, it's not. You you don't even know that yet. I mean I am just no, asking a question. I, we've had enough interactions for me to, to know to know it. Basically um, at least this is where this is what yeah, I feel is the case. Ba why don't you why don't you, know, you ask me, Matt, why don't you ask me, do you believe first and foremost, do you believe that the Israelites okay, um, pack. hold. No, because I'm, I'm trying pack. to help you because I'm not going to. No, not... no, no. I, I, to be honest, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I personally believe, now I could be wrong about what I'm about to say right now, but um, I personally believe that you do understand exactly what I'm saying, but because you really don't have an answer or something like that, you have to create this scenario that's that's not even real. That, well, oh, I, well, guess you know, you have, I guess you have your answer. I guess you have your answer then, man. No, I don't. I guess, no, I, I don't guess. at all. Well, I it don't sounds have like, It sounds like that's exactly what you just, it sounds like that's exactly what you're saying. Well, no, what I'm saying is, is that this is my perception of you avoiding answering my question. I just wanted you well, to then, answer Well, then it. you're asking, you, you're asking me a question you think I don't have an answer to. No, I, I do that, believe. That's what that you just you, said. No, no, no. I do believe that you personally do have an answer. It's just not okay. one that might do in your favor. <sighs> I'm, okay, big deal. Like you'll never know though, because we can't, we can't even answer your questions. Your questions are loaded. Well, I'm trying to unpack them the best I can. All right, I'll, oh, I'll no. do it maybe one last need, time. Maybe you need I'll do to it like... one last time. Show me somewhere in the Epistle of Titus. That's where... not a question. That's yeah, it not is. A question. Yeah, it is. No. Can you show me? Can you show me somewhere in the Epistle of Titus where Paul instructs Titus to go to the Jews first? Paul was Paul was was sent to the to the to the uncircumcision. He was sent to Gentiles. I'm why, talking about why, with Titus. Why would why would that be a thing? Why would that be in his in his document? I'm, I'm talking about what he asked Titus to do. I'm I'm asking you: Is there anywhere wasn't in, Titus under his ministry? Yes, but did he instruct Titus to go to the Jews first? And so and so Paul was sent to the uncircumcision. No, he was, I'm, he was, I'm asking you about Titus. He Paul was Paul was sent to the uncircumcision, and Titus was under his ministry. Right. I keep asking you, show me where he instructed Titus to go to the Jews first, like Paul did, like he did. Why would he? No, I'm, I'm asking you a question. No, I'm, no why, but why, why would that be the case? No, I'm, I'm assuming that that would be the case based on your presumption. So can you show me your presumption in Scripture? So we're, we're, we're dealing with your, what's in your head about your presumptions. No, I'm dealing with what I'm presuming of what you presume. 
you presume oh, that, hey, this smokes, whole thing God. about, you know, Jews going and have the gospel first. So oh, I'm asking smokes. when Paul sent Titus. Matt, Matt, it's an insensible question. No, Paul it's not. Was, okay, okay. So Paul was sent. This, this, is, this is for sure, like, like, I don't know. We may not get to, through all your questions. And I don't all right, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll scrap is, that no, one, no, no, this and is, I'll this ask is, an easier no, one. This is, why, this, is why I walk, this is why I walk away from you, Matt. This is why I, I don't yeah, – this, 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 no, no, no. I, I tell you what. No, no, no. Pack, this is why I don't answer you. This is why me, I don't answer you. Let me ask you a simpler question. No, Matt, this, this is why I don't answer you sometimes on comment boards because I'm not going to answer sensible questions. Pack, you're, Pack, silly, you're a genius. Matt, let me, let me ask you a silly question, question, dude. That's okay, a, well, this one's about Jesus the Messiah, question. the Son of God. So this one definitely is not silly. My question is, when Jesus ended up talking about Israel, where in the Gospels did Jesus ever Matt, no, 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 no. Matt, don't, don't, don't give me this where is the, don't, look, look. <laughs> wow! Cite, no, no. Uh, cite, uh, cite, cite, <laughs> cite the scripture. Look, 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 Matt. Like, okay, we, I'll cite the scripture. The, okay, the scripture. I'll cite the scripture. I'll cite, cite the scripture, scripture Luke, and let's talk okay, about. Okay, I'll I'll cite the scripture. In Luke twenty one, Jesus says to you know the disciples that the unbelieving Jews are going to be scattered in all nations. Where did Jesus ever say in all the Gospels that they would be regathered back. Where in Je say that again? Where in the Gospels did Jesus ever say that all of Israel would be gathered back? He talked about it on the Sermon of the Mount, Matt. Uh, chapter and verse. I mean, I know it's Matthew five, but what verse did he ever say that? Matthew five. Well, maybe it's six and seven because that's his whole Sermon on the Mount. Maybe we're, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm sorry. The Olivet Sermon. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Matthew 24. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he talks about the the elect being gathered from the four winds. Okay. And 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 what is and and what exactly is is that? And when they're gathered uh, from the four winds, like where the where are they going to go? Like I'm. Like what is what does he say there? I mean, we can go we can go through the whole chapter if you want, but like okay, he talks about um, the signs of the end. He talks about the abomination of desolation in Daniel, and then he talks about he talks about all the signs that are also mentioned in uh, Joel, Book of Joel, and Revelations, um, and then he, in in twenty nine it says immediately after the tribulation, those shall the days shall be in those days the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give it light. Um, and he talks about the rest of the signs. He says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes shall mourn upon the earth shall mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one and end of heaven unto earth. He also, and we know he's talking about the elect that was dispersed because he talks about, um, previously he talks about being, the Israelites being led captive into all nations. This is about the dispersion. Okay, okay. Um, that, that's that's an excellent answer. I mean, I may not agree because I'll go and study see what that means, but thank you. So my other question is this. Um, what does a Jew get in Christ that a Gentile does not? Well, if we're considering, if we're considering the, uh, the inheritance of Israel, he gets his, he gets his, he gets his home back, which is, which is Mount Zion. It's the lot of Israel, which is, does not belong to the Gentile. All right. It doesn't, it does not belong to the family of the Gentile. Um, um, he gets an end to, he gets an end to his oppression. <laughs> um, mm, let me see. What else? What else? <clears throat> he gets, he gets uh, a, a, a nation that governs the affairs in his best interest. Okay. Um, an Israelite is, if an Israelite is in dispersion, okay, we're talking about 
an Israelite in captivity. He is living under the rule of another people. When he comes back through, liber through liberation that's given by the Messiah, he gets his home back and he gets, he gets a king who is looking out for his best interests. Okay. And so, you know, again, when I look at your answers, you say, hey, you're going to get a land back. This is where you're going to get land. Um, when you look in the New Testament, it's spoken numerous times, especially by Peter, uh, that we have our inheritance in heaven, especially ironically in the book of Hebrews, where, you know, hey, we have a, a land of heaven that, that is ours. Then after that, you talk about, hey, you guys get rest from oppression. Jesus said, if you come to me, I will give you rest unto your souls. And then Hebrews 4 picks it up and says, hey, you know what? If you believe, you will enter into my rest. And then after that, you know, you talk about how you are going to be having your own government and ruler and things like that and nations, things like that. And meanwhile, in Revelation chapter 1, chapter 5, and chapter 20, it talks about how Christians are made kings and priests unto Christ and God. Okay. Um, so, so I'm wondering, like, in light of that, I see Old Testament promises that you're pointing out, and then I see all this New Testament promises going to Jews and Gentiles in Christ, and they, they seem to look... Okay, so, so, so um, there is definitely an importance in making it to, into paradise, into, into heaven. Um, but there's also an importance of the future of my, 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 um, my family. Um, I have a sister. Okay. And she has three daughters. I have three nieces who I care about. Um, I care about the world that they are going to live in when I pass on. Okay. Now for the Christian, maybe for you living another hundred years in America, is not that bad of an idea. But for me, who I, who I am aware of injustice, and, I, and I'm aware of social abuse and mistreatment of black peoples, not only in America, but in all the countries of domicile where we've been dispersed as slaves, and we've been for hundreds of years. I care for the children of these people, of our people. I care for my nieces. And so it is important, it is of prime importance that they live in a world where they're allowed to flourish without mistreatment and without abuse. So when I speak of a, when I speak of a, of a land where my king governs the affairs in my best interest, I know he's going to govern in the affairs of my niece's interest. I know he's going to govern the affair of my family in Panama, a family uh, who are people I consider family, like my brothers and sisters in Brazil and all throughout Latin America and out, all throughout East Asia. Okay. I care about the, few, the world that they live in. And prophecy says, and as we can see, the Messiah um, um, spoke on it. He, he reassured us that he's going to reestablish uh, a nation where we live and where we can dwell without fear. That's a very, very important thing to me. And, 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 and beyond the grave, beyond my date of expiration, like it, it, that, that importance, that, that signif the significance of that transcends time and space for me. Okay. I, want, I want Black people to be happy and free. And that's I, what the I Messiah is going yeah. to offer. Right. So I, I, I definitely got a, a way better understanding of what it is that, that you are, you know, definitely um, desirous about in terms of the type of place that you would want. Um, and, you know, I definitely know from my standpoint, when it, when it comes to just being in heaven, um, it's just from my understanding that everyone's focus will be on the joy of being in the presence of God. And we all know that when you're in a place like that, you don't even have to worry about, you know, whether or not Christ has your best interest. And like the, it, the question is, it's not even there. Um, and I think that's what like, when we talk about when it says put on the mind of Christ, but I, I did have one last question. 
Sure, um, we can do this before we close. Cool. So this is my final question, okay? Um, my final question is this. I I'm going to read a scripture. I'm going to ask a question, and that's it. And um, this scripture is as follows. It says, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof that he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, though I counted lot, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but as loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteous, which is of God by faith, that I may know, not who I am, but that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means that I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I have already attained, either, you know, we're already perfect, but I follow after that I may apprehend for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching unto those things which are before, whereunto have I already attained. Let us walk in this same example, this same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which also walk as ye have us for an example. For my walk, of whom I have told you often and now often even are weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is their destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look to our savior the lord jesus christ who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned unto the likeness of his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to even subdue all things himself philippians 3 my question is if I ask you a question about what's more important, Christ or your ethnicity, and you say, hey, it, it's, uh, it's out of the question. And Paul here ends up saying, I count all my ethnicity, circumcision, Hebrew, I count it all as a loss for Christ. Christ more important. I want to know, why is it that you don't follow in that same example? Uh, well, I don't agree with Paul. Okay. All right. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't feel like I have to place a value, a comparative value, say one is more important than the other. I understand Paul makes that distinct. He makes that distinction. He makes, he says Christ is more important than his heritage and that's his right. right. He, he's, he's, he's absolutely mm -hmm. entitled to it. That's what he believes. I just don't, I just don't agree. Okay. I, I think he kind of gets it from Exodus where it says, Hey, you know what? God is first, you put him above all things. So if you got the son of God, you think that, that would you would continue to kind of do that. That that was my what, yeah. what 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 scripture are you addressing in Exodus? Exodus, the Ten Commandments, the first commandment. Hey, you know, this is God, you love him first, you put him first, you have no other gods before nothing else before him. God what? is at the top. Right? Okay, okay. Yeah, and somehow that means not being conscious of your heritage? No, that means that, you know, you put God above, you know, your consciousness of your heritage. Like if you had to choose to, to accept one and let go of the other, like which one would it be? You know, which one is like more important? Well, know, does, that, that mean, that's how it was kinda... does that mean that one can't 
be excited about their heritage? Nope. Then you're avoiding okay. my question. I no, no, agree. no. I'm just, I'm no, no, because I think that one can, I think that one can be happy about their heritage and also be happy about the salvific work of Christ. We all agree with that. No one's disagreeing okay, with that. Well then, well, we're asking, well, then, we're asking, you know, why is that not which a great one is more to, important to you? Why is that not a great place to just leave it off at? Because we want, that doesn't answer the question, which one is more important to you personally? I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't deem one more important than the other. Really? I don't even make, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even make that, I don't even make that, that, that analysis. Now, if I had to choose, like, obviously the salvific work of Christ is, is, is like, I can't say that's not important or not more important than my heritage, but it very, it has very much to do with my heritage. Like he's, I'm, if I'm living under the dispersion, under captivity, I need him to come back and and and, and help me out. <laughs> like, right, and so if you, you know what I'm saying, so I'm not, right. I'm not so saying that you, me being an Israelite, like I can be an okay, Israelite. Okay, so if you want, hold on, this is, hold on, that I can I can be under captivity, and 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 that's it. Like, right, I can so die. If, I could die in captivity. Okay, right. So if you weren't an Israelite at all, then you know, I guess what Christ dying on the cross really wouldn't mean anything because of that, because you're not. Uh, uh, Israelite, so therefore, you know, his dying on the cross won't mean anything. You know what? I think that I think that would be a great question for for a Gentile, Matt. Um, okay. So, no, with but that, I'm asking, uh, with but that, I'm asking I'm you, going to have to were a Gentile. I'm sorry, man. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to have to ask you. Like we we've gone well over the time we were allotted. Um, okay. I, th- right. I think we can um we can maybe look forward to a, a another conversation. From what okay. I understand, you you might have some brothers that are, are willing. I know there's at least one that is that is willing to talk to you about to you about this issue. So this definitely okay. won't be the last conversation, man. With that, I thank you for joining me, Matt. Um, like I said, this won't be the last time, and um, and I'm looking forward to the next time speaking with you. All right, thank you, man. Fantastic, brother. Yep. Okay, show Peace. Off. All right. To uh, to wrap up the uh, conversation, <clears throat> um, it seems as though there is there is some trouble um, with Christians when it comes to allowing Israelites to just be happy with 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 them um, finding their heritage um, and being happy about the Messiah and looking forward to hoping in the Messiah at the same time. What is the problem with that? Why is it that if I am, if I appreciate where I come from, who I, who I am, why must that come at the cost of not equally appreciating the role of the Messiah and what the Messiah is going to do, what he already did thus far. Why is that a problem? I extend the invitation. I extend the challenge to urban apologists, Christian apologists, Dr. Eric Mason, Nefernetti, Adam Coleman, Vocab Malone, Mike Faithful to God Pereira, Marshall Cherry Love Forbes. Why is it, why can't Israelites equally appreciate where they come from and, and appreciate the salvific work of, of Christ? Why do you make us choose between one or the other? Okay, this was a follow-up discussion to episode seven. <clears throat> I strongly encourage everyone after this, go review episode seven. I just put it up today. Um, it's on the Rumble Room channel. Uh, subscribe to the Rumble Room channel so you don't miss a thing, miss any of the updates, uploads. Um, I'm extending this dialogue. This is, this, we need to put this to rest. This is a false dilemma. And if you, if you are a Christian, if you are a Christian apologist, if you are an urban apologist, if there, are, if there is something you do not understand, 
we need to establish a dialogue. You going up and down the threads and making all the videos, all the live streams that you want and saying, this is what Israelites believe. And you haven't, you haven't taken the time to ask them plainly. That's a problem. And, it, and, and it's, it's a problem for your apologetics, for your testimony. And, and, it, and it likely could be a character problem. I think with enough time, we'll, we'll all see. But we need to establish some genuine dialogue. It's one thing to, to disagree. It's one thing to not want a thing to be true. If you don't want a thing to be true, that is something totally, di that's something totally different than if it is actually true. Either something is true or it is not. And we need to ask the questions to really bring those things to the surface, to, to address those issues. I also recommend and, and, and extend the invitation to other Israelites to embark with me on this, on this quest to cultivate, to foster fair and amicable and respectful dialogue with Christians. That is the only way we are really going to make an advancement. This is, I feel, is really the last chapter in this debate. The game is over. The discussion is over. The only thing the world needs to see is that we can be upstanding um, 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 interlocutors, okay? If you find that Christians if you are extending yourself as a, extending the opportunity to dialogue peacefully and amicably, and a Christian rejects, okay, there's an issue. If you're not being peaceful, you're not being respectful and amicable, we have a, we have a problem. We don't end the problem. We don't get our solution. The game they play is this slander, this character slander, this bad jacketing, and we can really put this to rest. We can really put all that to rest. Let them abuse you. Let them slander you. Let them bear false witness. Their shame is on their own heads. We don't have to internalize their abuse. We don't have to internalize their slander. We need to motion for respectful and amicable dialogue so that we are blameless amongst men. This is the last chapter. And, then, and that can, that, that's, a, that's, a lot to, that's a lot to chew. This is going to take some time before, before we can accomplish. That's the process, right? Like the Holy Spirit, the Ruach is dealing with us all. And we don't all act the best at all given times. But when we're on record and we're, we invite dialogue, this is how this should be our, our, um, our norm. Respectful dialogue, okay? Let them maintain their insensibility. Let them, let them you know, if they have insensible arguments, let it get out. Let it get out on record because you know what? The Christians are going to go back through these dialogues and they're going to judge for themselves. They're going to judge for themselves. We've, we've, done, we've done what we've done as a charity, operating through the spirit. We're supposed to, we're supposed to get it out there, get the message out there. We've been doing that. Um, but this idea that we have to, we have to convince them. We don't have to convince them. There's nothing more we have to convince them. We've, we have the biblical evidence. We have the scripture to back us, and we have extra biblical sources. We have the, his, the secular historical record that even supports us. All we have to do is just like Brother, Brother Talmud Mikhail said, shake the dust off. We don't have to get ourselves wrapped up in their anger. We don't have, we don't have to be angry with them. They're angry because they're dealing with the reality that you know what, maybe we have inherited lives from our fathers. The whole world is going through this right now, right? And you wake up, you wake up to the truth. You're gonna, you know, you feel a certain way. There's a disappointment. They're disappointed 
that they've had it wrong. And they're looking for something to fight. They're looking for a punching bag, right? So all we need to do is state the facts and let that be that. If they want to speak in sensibility, let them speak in sensibility because they'll only appear insensible to themselves because we know the truth. They can't, they can't convince us. We're here. We're here now. Israel is, Israel is back, right? All right, so with that, um, I'd like to say um, thank you. Thank you to Matt Sorrell Sali. Um, if you're an apologist and you want to uh, take part in the dialogue, respectful amicable dialogue, please contact me. Um, <clears throat> all the all those who tuned in, thank you so much. This live wouldn't be anything without you guys. Um, this live is done for the edification of the community. So I hope the discussion has been edifying. Um, and with that, I'd like to say uh, have a great uh, night and peace, light, and shalom.